Hello everyone and welcome back to Willow's Notes. In today's video, we have question of the day. It's a free response question on cell signaling. So pause the video, try to answer the questions and then hit play so that we go over the answers together. So let's read A together. Based on the signaling pathway of the figure, describe the role of epinephrine. No matter which signaling pathway we have, there is always a signal that is binding to the receptor. In this particular example, that signal is epinephrine. So when we are asked what is the role of epinephrine, all we need to say is that epinephrine is the ligand that binds to the receptor and activates it. Let's move to question B. Explain how the cellular response would be affected if GDP was bound irreversibly to the G protein. G protein is activated when GTP replaces GDP. If GDP is irreversibly bound, meaning GDP is bound, stuck there, we cannot remove it, then we can no longer activate G protein. And if the G protein is inactive, then all the proteins in the pathway will also be inactive. Ultimately, there will be no breaking down of glycogen. Consequently, the level of glycogen within the cell will increase because the enzymes responsible for breaking down glycogen will not be activated. So now let's move on to question C. Describe the role of adenylylcyclase in the epinephrine signaling pathway. We can clearly see from the figure provided within the question that when the G protein activates adenylylcyclase, the activated enzyme converts ATP to cyclic AMP. And what is cyclic AMP? Cyclic AMP is a second messenger that amplifies the signal. Question D says, explain why ATP is needed in step five. First, let's find step number five. This here is step number five. And as we can see, protein kinase A is phosphorylating phosphorylase kinase in order to activate it, right? So why ATP is needed? It's because protein kinase A needs ATP to phosphorylate phosphorylase kinase. The phosphate group will change the shape of phosphorylase kinase and hence it will activate it. Okay, so we are finally down to our last question. A student claims that inhibiting step seven leads to a decreased oxygen consumption by the cell. Provide reasoning to justify the student's claim. Step seven is the hydrolysis of glycogen to glucose 1-phosphate. Glucose 1-phosphate enters glycolysis, followed by the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, which we all know needs oxygen for it to take place. If glucose 1-phosphate is not formed, then oxygen will not be required, and hence its consumption will decrease. And this was our question of the day. I hope you found it easy and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.